Well, uh, again, guys, a reminder, September 20th, see me during wind time if you want to come in and discuss anything you're not 100% sure about. I'd be happy to help you out with things there today. So, Kids, uh, are you in decimals right now? Or do most of you at least have access to decimals to be able to help us out with this? Good. Carson, was that quiz due yesterday? Oh, uh, yeah, but I haven't pulled it in yet. So if you haven't turned it in yet, and I don't want you to panic on that one. I'm more concerned about the online book page than I am that take-home quiz. Okay. That quiz was designed to challenge you a little bit, and um, I'm going to be honest with you, if you don't get a perfect score on it. Wait, the one on? The online one? Yeah. Yeah, that's, some of those problems are pretty tough, um, but I wanted to see what you guys do with that. So, and, and kind of explain those, uh, when we hand those out, you know, we talked about, we talked about sometimes in math things are very, very easy. The part in the middle is really what we want to make sure we understand, and then there's some things that are going to challenge you a little bit. When we take tests and quizzes in here for the most part, um, like we do on paper and pencil, most of that stuff's kind of right in the middle where I want it to be. The one that I gave you right there, I want to see what you guys do with things. So if you get like a 75 out of that, out of a you know 100, and that's still going to go in as a really good grade for you. Okay, make sense yet? Okay, uh, we had a lot of kids come in, and what I would encourage you to do on something like that, if you're not sure, we used wind time. A lot of kids came in for wind time yesterday and used that time to. Uh, uh, ask questions on that and that was great so uh, it was almost like an enrichment type thing or a challenge type thing and it was great yesterday so anytime I send out those online quizzes I don't want you to panic too much but they're going to challenge you a little bit and I would encourage you to come on in and visit with me when they're assigned okay make sense yep. okay uh, so guys today right here we're going to start talking about uh, parent functions and transformations today that's our title in 2.1 uh, how about a volunteer to read our essential question for me, please? Anybody want to read that for me? What are the characteristics of some of the basic parent functions? Okay, characteristics of some of the basic parent functions. We're going to look at some basic parent functions today on the second page. You don't need to go here, but really the four that we're going to talk about today is a constant function, a linear function, a quadratic function, and an absolute value function. Show of hands here. How many of you guys have heard of those types of functions before? Constant, linear, quadratic and absolute value. You guys should know those, okay? We'll talk about them. And really what we're looking at doing is the following here. How do we um, <clears throat> judge some of the characteristics of those? Well, we need to be able to identify some families of functions, okay? Some families function weird, don't they? My family, we're all weirdos. It's just a goofball, goofball reunion when we get together. Anybody else have a family like that? When the reunion, all the families and the cousins get together, it's a little goofy. Yeah, yeah, that's ours too. So we're going to identify some family functions, okay? Uh, we're also going to describe transformations. Kids, what's this word transformation mean? Transform. It transforms. It means it changes somehow. If you transform something, it means you're changing it, all right? You know, you might say this transformed into that. And it means change to something. Okay, and we'll talk about what that means. Last one right here, then we're going to also look at saying some of the transformations are a combination of different moves. And we'll talk about these types of moves in the vocabulary here. But uh, really what we need to be able to do is say, okay, what family are you from? How have you changed? And is there a combination of changes that affect you? That's all we're really after today. So let's get this down vocab-wise. Okay, a parent function. Volunteer to read that definition. It's the most basic function in a family, okay? Uh, and, and what I'm going to write up here in the box is this. I'm going to write down C, C the second page, all right? Because that second page is going to help us out with the most basic parent functions. And I'll show you where that's at in a little bit, okay? Transformation. Um, we kind of talked about this already, but it's a function in the same family. They're transformations of their parent function. It just means it moves or changes. Okay. When I say it moves, it might be a slide, it might be stretch, <laughs> it might be flipped, it might be shrunk, something like that. Okay. All right, so one of the types of transformations that we're going to talk about, the first type of transformation that we're going to talk about is what's known as a translation. And a translation is a transformation that shifts the graph horizontally and or what, kids? Okay, so it can shift it either horizontally or it can shift it vertically. It basically, it slides it either up or down. It slides a parent function up 
or down or what other directions if it's a horizontal shift okay so left or right that's what I would say right there okay a translation is basically taking a parent function you're not changing a size or a shape you're just sliding left right up or down and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second in fact why don't you guys jump into decimals for me and we're gonna make a cheat sheet of some of this stuff today to help you with this are you guys in decimals right now type in y equals 2x for me You guys got that in there? Y equals 2x? Just a straight line through the origin, isn't it? Okay, now type in y equals 2x plus 5 in the second field. Yeah, in the original function, what's that plus 5 doing? Moving it, basically taking the original function and moving it up how many units? 5 units. So we'll get a little cheat sheet put together for some of the effects of adding, subtracting, multiplying. All that kind of stuff, okay? All right, next uh, one that we're going to talk about. The second kind of transformation that we're going to deal with is a reflection. Volunteer to read reflection for me, kids. Transformation that flips the graph over a line called the line of reflection. You bet. It's just basically a flip, okay? The word you really need to understand here is it just flips it over, okay? All right, it flips it over, all right? Okay. Another type of function that we're going to have is this. Sometimes in families, you can take a graph that's maybe like this, and you can stretch it vertically. You pull the top up, and you pull the bottom down. You stretch it out vertically. Okay, And a vertical <laughs> stretch is going to be a way to transform the graph of a function is to multiply all of the y-coordinates by the same positive factor. I want you to underline the word multiply in this. For vertical stretch and again we'll look at some more examples on a cheat sheet here it says the following you're going to multiply by the same positive factor other than what what's it say here in parentheses other than what one. if you take something times one what are you going to get out the same number. the same thing if you multiply by one you're not changing anything so there's not going to be any stretch to this okay it says right here when you multiply the factor greater than one the transformation is what Okay, so I want you to underline right here. When the factor is, when the factor is greater than one, it stretches out. Okay, it's kind of, oh, I don't know. You guys know the springs, right? Springs in your cars, around the shock absorbers. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, if I would stretch that out, you can see them pulling apart right there. Stretching that out means that it was multiplied by a factor greater than one. Okay. If we don't stretch something vertically, the other option after that spring then is to do what? Like think of a spring in a car. Doesn't it compress sometimes to absorb some shock? Okay. So we also talk about instead of vertical stretch, we're also going to talk about what? Vertical shrink. Vertical shrink. And this is when if vertical stretch happens when you multiply by a factor greater than one, what do you think vertical shrink is? Okay, hey, you're going to go ahead and you're going to multiply by a factor that is less than 1. So the transformation, and I've got a typo in here, should be a vertical, not a stretch, but a vertical what? Shrink, okay? Okay, vocab-wise, there's a lot of stuff going on up here, but I think that once you start seeing this in action today, it'll make perfect sense to you, all right? Don't really need to fill anything in um, and vertical stretch. Uh, maybe I'll just write up here times by more than one. And we'll show you what that looks like here in a second. And then this is going to be times by less than one. Okay, times by more than one, times by less than one. Okay, those are maybe the little quick notes out of that vocab that you want to get. 
Okay, so our goal is to understand how family, uh, how parent functions transform uh, from different families. And uh, we have all these vocab words up here. These are the types of things that are going to happen to our parent functions. They're going to get translated. They're going to get reflected. They're going to stretch vertically. They're going to shrink vertically. When I talk translation, you can move it up and down, left and right. All right. The second page is crucial for you. I think at the top of the second page, you should write down, this is pretty important. Okay. This is a pretty important page. I'm going to do my best to make these graphs work for you today. Um, kids, um, you might want a ruler for some of this today, so I'm going to hand these out. So I'm going to take one and pass that on. Try not to ruin them. Everybody thinks that these are drumsticks, or they think they bend really well, and they don't. And then I've got lots of broken ones, so try to be nice to them. I know they're not the greatest in the world, so. Um, probably a whole lot of sticker on them. They're not very good. Right? Jordan, you agree with that one? All right, good. It's a good show. I like the look of these pickups. They're pretty sweet looking, I think. Well, the new Chevys look terrible. Have you seen the new Chevy trucks? Ugh. I saw a commercial. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I guess keep the one I have, right? Yeah. All right, kids. Um, we're going to put up here some, some uh, notes up here. First of all, core concept today. These up here are going to be basically the four parent functions that we talk about right here. So I'm going to write down here, these are the four parent functions that we're going to really deal with today, all right? I want to get you a quick graph of what they really look like. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit here so we can work with this. What's the name of the first parent function that we're going to be working with? Okay. Do this for me, kids. Um, I'm just going to pick a parent function. Of, uh, for any constant function right here, your, your form of the function is of the following. y equals some number. Okay, Your form for that is like y equals some number. All right. So any constant function is just going to be a horizontal line. Any constant function is just simply going to be a horizontal line. It's y equals some number. I might pick on the example, say, maybe y equals 2 here, kids. Okay, so on the y-axis, I would go up here to 2 and then just draw a, whoa, that's a big line. Let me change the size of that. You can see that one from outer space, can't you? Is that a little better, kids? And I'm just going to write up here that this is the function y equals 2 up here. All right? Constant function is when y equals what, kids? Some number. Some number. It doesn't matter what number it is, but it's always going to be a horizontal line. Okay? So we need to understand what these parent functions are first. Okay? Next form that we're going to talk about up there is uh, a linear function. Okay? And the form for any linear function is a, is a following here. It's going to be y equals x. Now, kids, specifically, how many x? Three. How many x are up there? y equals x. When I say y equals x, how many x is that really? One. Help me remember slope-intercept form. You guys remember slope intercept form? Should. <coughs> What's the y intercept of this form of an equation, kids? Zero. Zero. Okay, right there. And then what's the slope, really? Rise one, run one. So the general form of the parent function, any linear function that's parent uh, form y equals x, this is the parent function for any linear function. So. You're just going to draw a, a line through the origin with a slope of 1. So basically you're going diagonally bottom left corner to top right corner up there, okay? That's going to be your parent function 
for any type of graph that is, what's the word up here, kids? Linear. Okay. Okay. Next one's a quadratic. Anybody know the form for a quadratic? You guys have done quadratic formula, right? What formula, or I should say, what power does that involve, quadratic formula? Second. Second power, yeah, you bet. So the form for this right here, kids, is going to be the following. The form will be y equals x squared. That's going to be the parent function for any quadratic. Let's get a graph of this. Let's talk about the graph of this right here. I'm going to blow the graph up one more time here, kids, so I can really see this. But the form is going to be y equals x squared. Okay. On this graph right here, let's talk. What's 0 to the second power, kids? Or 0 times 0? Zero? <coughs> 0. Okay, so I'm going to plot 0, 0 right here. What's 1 squared? 1. So 1 comma 1. How about 2 squared? <coughs> 2 to the second power would be what? 4. So I'm going to plot the point 2 comma 4 up here. And you don't need to use your ruler for this one. What's negative 1 to the second power if we start moving left, kids? Negative 1 times negative 1 if I plug that in for x. What's negative 1 squared? 1 again, right? Okay. What's negative 2 squared, kids? Negative 4. Right. So what we end up getting out of this is this graph, y equals x squared. What kind of graph do we give? What do we call this? Say it again, Xavier. It's a parabola. Absolutely. The most important shape known to mankind. I shouldn't call it a shape, but the most important <laughs> geometric graph known to mankind. I'll do my best to draw this, all right, kids? It comes through here and then use around like so. Very good. I need to make that smaller a little bit. Okay, it's just a U shape. Okay. So it's a parabola. I'm going to write down here maybe the following. It is a parabola. So it's going to be a U shape. Oh my gosh. Maybe we should change our logo to a parabola. A U shaped parabola for our school. A parabola U. Oh, how nerdy would that be? That would be so cool. How they would wear that shirt. Maybe just for this math class. Should we call it Union Math Club with a parabola? Make the U. No? Okay, I'll stop there. I'm sorry. I'm taking this way too far, right, Jaden? So fear we there's not very many weirdos in the building like me, right? Is that what you're trying to say? That's okay. All right, last one right here, kids. What shape does absolute value make? You guys recall that? What's the absolute value of positive one? One. What's the absolute value of negative one? One. We're talking about distance away from zero. So the graph of this right here, your form on any absolute value is going to take this, and you should know this. Okay, I'm just going to chalk it up to you guys being up early again. Here's your parent function. Y is just equal to the absolute value of x. Okay. Uh, your graph basically, absolute value then of, of zero would just be zero. Absolute value of one would be one, and so on. And instead of being a U-shape, absolute value really is going to be what kind of a shape, kids? It's a V-shape. Okay, so your graph for this is going to look like the following. It's just going to be a V-shape like so.
Okay, that's what you're going to have here, kids. Write down that this is a V shape. Whoops. Right down here, this is a V shape. Okay. Now, you guys should have all seen those functions in the past. Right? Okay. So here's what we want to start looking at. How are things transformed? How do I take a parent function? How do I take a linear function and change it into a different linear function with certain parameters right here? All right? So what we've got down here, kids, and I think that this will be very important to you, we've got a little bit of a what here, kids? Let's just say cheat sheet. You guys want to add a cheat sheet? Yes? OK. Here's the deal. Vertical shift is going to happen when the following. Vertical shift means either move up or what? Down. It's either going to mean move up. Down, left, or right. Or, okay, let's cheat this a little bit. We're going to cheat the cheat sheet. It can move up or <laughs> down, okay? Annika, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you to hold off on that one. Vertical shift would be up and down. What you said right here, Left and right would fall under the. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's put left and right right here. Okay, and a vertical stretch. I don't think. Um, I don't think you really need to under you know worry about what we need. To, I'm going to draw arrows like this. Okay, it's going to stretch going up, and it's also going to stretch going down like that. Okay. So a graph that might be like this could get stretched. It's just getting pulled apart, okay? Then a vertical shrink, a vertical shrink, here's what I'm going to draw for you guys. From the top, it's moving down. It looks kind of like this. It's weird, but what, are, what those arrows are saying is that line right there is going to shrink if you draw it like that, okay? And then a flip, don't worry about getting in here and a flip, okay? All right, let's get some rules right in here. If you ever shift something right here, you're either adding a number or subtracting a number. Okay? Now, I'm going to pick on, which of these functions should we pick on? Not the constant one. Which one do you guys want to pick on up here? Should we pick on the linear one? Is that okay? Let's use the linear one as our example. First of all, kids, what's the parent function for a linear function or a linear graph? What's the form? What's it say up there on the form? Y equal x. If I want to take that and just take that graph and slide it up, then an example would be like y equals x plus 4. Okay? I added some number to it right here. And basically what it does is it takes that original function and takes every point and shifts it up how many units? Four. Four units. Okay? What if there was a minus sign in it? <coughs> it, it would have moved down. Okay? All right. So the way you shift something up vertically or shift something down vertically is either by adding or what? Subtracting. Subtracting. Okay? Guess what, kids? Horizontal shift is exactly the same thing. You can shift things horizontally, left and right, by adding and subtracting. But there's a twist to this. I'm going to write it this way. You add or subtract in parentheses like this. Okay? Now I shouldn't have picked a, I shouldn't have picked a linear function to do this. Alright? Maybe for this one here, let's use y equals x squared as our parent function for our horizontal shift. I'm going to write right up here y equals x. We use that form for this, okay? Maybe get rid of this up here. How many use for horizontal shift y equals x squared? Is that okay? All right. I want you to be very careful about this one right here. Let's do this, kids. In your, in your uh, decimals, type in y equals x squared for me. Get your parent function, y equals x squared. You guys okay with that? Okay, for your example, I want you to type in right here. In parentheses, type in x minus 3 to the second power now. Make sure you have parentheses around the x minus 3. Ooh, 
much level when you reach your pocket by the way. Okay, do you have y equals x in field number one? That's my first question. I'm sorry, y equals x squared in the first field. That's my first question. Do you have that? Okay, did you type this in the second field, kids? Got them both in there? Got them both in there? Okay. Describe to me how you went from the original parent function to the new one you just grabbed. What direction did it move or how did it transform? Move what direction there, Lex? Move to the right. How many units? Look at your origin. Move to the right three units. Okay. Kids, moving stuff left and right is weird and you need to be careful on it. Okay. When I put a minus in parentheses, it actually moves what direction? Right. right. When I put, what do you think would happen if I would have put a plus 3 in here in parentheses? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. If you have a plus or minus in parentheses, it takes your parent function and it shifts it left or right. A positive right here would actually shift this to the left. I'm going to draw an arrow in there to shift left. A negative actually shifted it what direction again, Lexi? Right. Okay, so the minus would shift it right. <coughs> so left and right movement is going to happen when you add or subtract inside of what, kids? Parentheses. Can you handle that? Okay with that? Okay. Let's get a rule for vertical stretch then. We kind of had it in there, but a vertical stretch basically is to times by greater than 1. So get rid of the, let's pick on y equals x squared the rest of the way. I think that's a good one to pick on. Okay, let's pick on y equals x squared for a while. So get rid of the y equals in parentheses x minus 3 squared from decimals. And let's do this. Let's type in y equals 2x squared in that second field. quantity x minus 3 squared, and in field 2, type in y equals 2x squared. Okay. What's that doing to all your points? Don't you have a bunch of points in red at the beginning? And then your blue points, are those blue points above it or below the original one? So it went in. So it's like taking those lower points and moving them all up. It's stretching it up. Okay? Make sense there? So if you multiply by a number greater than 1, what happens, kids? It's going to Stretch. vertically. Okay? And then a shrink is just going to be the opposite. It's if you times by a number, say, less than 1. So maybe type this in in field 2. y equals 0.5 x squared. Okay? And then tell me, is your new graph above or below the parent function? Is your new function above or below the parent function? Below it, right? Okay. So it's going to shrink. shrink. Yeah, it's going to shrink. Okay. Make sense? Anybody know how to flip a parent function? Okay, hey, this is really simple. Let's pick on y equals x squared again. To flip, you basically, guys, you're just going to, a U shape would turn into an arch if it was flipped. Here's how it works. You just times by a negative. So do this. Type in y equals negative x squared in field two. <coughs> okay, that negative sign out in front. Type in y equals negative x squared out in front. You had an original u shape. When you type in y equals negative x squared, what are you getting out? You get an arch underneath it, don't you? Okay. You get like the Under Armour logo. We can use parabolas to make Under Armour's logo. But you guys didn't. Look at, hey, uh, Brandon, show them. 
see, he's got that top one, y equals x squared. The other one, y equals negative x squared. We've got an Under Armour logo up there. Under Armour's probably the most mathematically equipped clothing company there is. They were thinking when they did that, weren't they? How many of you like Parsons, you shut up? I know somebody's thinking it, and that's okay. You guys have these cheat sheet rules down? This is going to save your life in this chapter, okay? Don't go away from this. I promise you, you're going to be uh, appreciative of this, okay? Let's get into what we need to get into, okay? You might be referring back and forth to rules, but let's roll. Next page. You guys with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, here we go. You guys are so exciting in the morning. It's awesome. Okay, uh, example one, identifying a function family. Uh, let's talk about this right here. There's a function right here uh, that I'm going to call... Uh, h of x right here. This function I'm going to put right here is called h of x. Okay. Basically say h depends upon what you get out. Whatever you put in for x is going to determine the h value. It says identify the function family to which h belongs and then compare the graph of h to the graph of its parent function. First of all, what kind of graph is that? Is it constant? Is it linear? Is it linear? Yeah, it is. So what family does this belong to, kids? <coughs> what family does this belong to? Linear. Belongs to the linear family. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw decimals up here on my board. Let's see if we can't produce that. What's general form for a linear function, kiddos? Y equals x. Okay. Let's talk. Back on my uh, uh, graph right here, we need to describe how we get this right here. Okay. First of all, my parent function, y equals x, and this one right here, are they even going the same direction? If you think about slopes, one has a positive slope. This actually has a negative slope, doesn't it? Ooh, hot dogs. All right. If it has a negative slope and the original one had a positive slope, that means that graph had to do what? It had to flip. So what am I going to have to throw in front to produce a flip, number one? All right, I've got to put a negative in there. So let's see, let's see if we can throw that in there. I'm going to go into field two and type in y equals. We know it flips, so what should I put out in front of the x? Negative. Okay. We've got it flipped first, don't we? Are we good there? Okay, the graph had to flip. We, we plugged that in. Okay, now, this blue line right here. Is this blue line <coughs> in the same exact spot as our graph originally? Absolutely not. We have some problems here. If you think about y equals 1x and y equals negative 1x, aren't there slopes 1 and negative 1 respectively? What's the slope on that line up there? Look at point to point. Pick one point, go to another. Rise over run. This is really down to and over what? So instead of having a negative 1 slope, we probably better have a negative... <coughs> Negative two. two slopes. So I'm going to go back to this. All right. Let's change this to negative what here, kids? Okay. Okay, does this steepness right here, or slope, if you will, on the blue line, look like it kind of matches what we have in this graph? Okay. But is that blue line in decimals in the exact same position as that one? Okay. If you notice right here, kids... My line still passes through the origin right here, okay? Does this line pass through the origin? In fact, maybe where is that passing through? If you think of the y-axis as maybe a passing point, what's the y-intercept up there? Four. Four, okay, so let's see if we can't produce this graph by doing what? 
What am I going to do to the y equals negative 2x? I want that to move up 4. Plus 4. Plus 4. By golly, I think we're on to something. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this right here. Forget the red line for a second. Does this graph now look like it has a y-intercept of 4 and then down 2 and over 1 for me, slope-wise? Absolutely does. Let's check this out. Doesn't that match this graph right here? This function, kids, right here becomes h of x equal to negative 2x plus 4. You're going to get asked a lot of questions today say, first of all, identify the parent function. That's easy. We knew it was linear. The second part is going to say, describe how it's transformed. Okay? Now, we just put that cheat sheet together to describe how stuff is transformed based on the things that are out here. <coughs> One way it's transformed is to take this y equals x right here and multiply it by what? Multiply by negative. Okay, what's the negative doing to my graph first? The negative made the graph flip. I'm going to write this down here. The negative made the graph flip. Okay, what did the 2 right out in front of the x do? That's like 2 times x, isn't it? Take a look at your cheat sheet on the back. What's multiplying by a factor greater than 1 going to do to it? What's multiplying by a factor greater than 1 do? It's a vertical stretch. It basically is saying we're going to make the slope steeper on stuff. Okay, so this 2 is a vertical stretch. And then what did the effect of adding 4 have on the end? And again, keep in mind, there's no parentheses here. Somebody said it. I thought I heard it. What's the effect of the plus <coughs> 4 have on this, kids? It was at the origin. That adding 4 moved it where? Oh, come on, guys. Adding 4 moves this up 4. Okay. Okay. If you can just look at this and say the parent function was x. There's a negative here. That has an effect. There's a 2 here. That has an effect. There's a plus 4. That has an effect. You need to tell me what those parameters do to the parent function to produce or transform a parent function into a new graph. Okay, let's look at some more. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Could you just punch stuff in decimals and easily get answers? Yes, you could. But does it help you anything here if you're asked to describe stuff and you can't do it? What are these parameters? Probably not. Thank you, your question. Absolutely. You bet. <coughs> All right, uh, here we go then. Example two, this is where things get rolling here, okay? It says describing translations. It says graph g of x equals what, kids? Absolute value of x plus 1 and it's? Okay, let's first of all, what would the parent function be of our four? Constant, linear, quadratic, or absolute value? Absolute value is going to be uh, the parent function. So I'm going to write down the parent function is y equals absolute value of x. Okay. One thing I want you to understand about absolute values. When you have absolute values, those bars that are around absolute values are treated like parentheses. Okay. Hear what I said there. Anytime you have absolute value, those bars are treated like what? Parentheses. Okay. Let's just check this out, kids. It says graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 1 and it's what? Get your parent function in there first. This is just a V shape where the uh, origin is the uh, vertex of the V. So get your parent function in there first. Okay, you guys tell me what you think is going to happen here. First of all, how is the function we're about to graph different from the parent function? What's in there? So it's an absolute value, not just of x now, but of x plus 1. Okay. Think of those bars as parentheses. Go back to your cheat sheet. Tell me how the parent function is going to transform 
to produce the absolute value of x plus 1. Adding a value basically in parentheses. Horizontal shift, what direction? Left or right? This is going to move left, what direction? Left, yes. Left, how many units? <coughs> okay, here's your new function then. You're simply going to put everything over one unit. So guys, do you agree the new vertex right here would be right there? Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Do you guys agree that my new vertex is going to be right here now? Okay, so just make a V-shape from that. Slope's still going to be 1. Here we go. This is your new one right here. It took every point and shifted it what direction, kids? One unit to the left. We should be able to look at the cheat sheet and say, oh, that's how it's going to move every single time, shouldn't we? Let's try some more. You guys have enough time on that one? Okay. Anybody need more time? Anybody have questions to this point? You guys good? Okay, let's go to the next page right here. Any questions over here at all? Kids good? All right. Make me nervous when you're so quiet. All right. Graphing and describing reflections. No problem. It says graph k of x equals what here, kids? Negative x and it's what? Well, let's tell me about the parent function. Does this look like a constant function, a linear function, a quadratic, or an absolute? What's the parent function to that? It's linear. So it's going to be y equals x. So here's the parent function to this. y equals x is just a line through the origin with slope of 1. There it is. It's a diagonal. Kids, help me. What's going to happen to... <coughs> What's going to happen to uh, my line if I throw a negative out front then? Flip. It's going to flip it, right? Uh, and, and you guys should know this anyway. If I go from y equals positive x to y equals negative x, you're basically going from a positive slope of 1 to a negative slope of 1. And let me show you what I mean by flipping, okay? Here's the new one right here. The y equals negative x, or the, in this case, I guess, k of x equal negative x. First of all, do you agree with my graph? That's my first question. You guys okay with my graph there? Okay, let me tell you what I mean by flipping right here. This point up here, what's the y value to this point right there, kids? The one I just plotted up there, what's the y value to that point? Three. When I flip this over, where does that land down here? Doesn't that land at negative three? Putting that negative out front and saying, hey, take that positive three and first flip it down to what? Well, negative three. Take a look right here. Isn't this negative 6 right here where I'm pointing at? Where's that flip up to, kids? Positive 6, okay. All right. So the effect that negatives have, again, kids, what's a negative out in front? Or if you take the x times a negative, what's it do to your graph? It <coughs> flips. Okay, it flips. Oh, we're moving right along, kids. Example four. I know I'm going quickly. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay. Graphing and describing stretches and shrinks. This one here will be a little, little more difficult. I think we'll end with these as our last two examples. We'll pick the other two up tomorrow. Be in good shape, okay? I'll probably send out an online here in a little bit uh, today. Uh, so be looking for that, okay? Let's talk. It says graph each function and it's what, kids? Okay, so let me boom this up a little bit so I have room to work. Let's do the y equals 3x squared. First of all, what's its parent function? Negative 
Who's mama and papa here? Y equals what? X y equals x squared. Okay, good. Now this one here is going to it's going to have a tough time fitting in here, and that's okay. Y equals x squared goes 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. It's going to make a U shape. So I like to plot those points right here to make my parabola. Okay? This one here is your parent function. I'll do my best to draw this curve. Okay, there's the parent function. Okay, and I want to plot those points again uh, so they're visible. So it was 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. Okay. Are you okay with the parent function first? So there's a 3 out in front. Is that 3 plus x squared, 3 times x squared? Tell me what that 3 is going to do to the parent function. When I go to the cheat sheet and look at that 3, what's it going to do to the parent function? Sterling, you were going to say something. Stretch. Stretches it vertically by three. Now here's what a stretch of three means right here, kids. Listen carefully. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to write stretches by, I'm going to write SF, which stands for scale factor of three. Okay. Start at zero, zero right here. What's the Y value to this point? What's the Y value to this point? Zero. Take zero times three. What is it? Zero. So it's still where? Well, it's still right here. Now look at this point. One comma one. What's the y value to this point? One comma one. So this is going to stretch to one comma what now? Three. That y value is going to stretch up here to three. Isn't the y value of this point here one? So where's that going to stretch to? Yep. Okay. These values are 4. Where are these eventually going to stretch to, kids? 12. 12, way up here. So you're going to have a really skinny parabola that kind of comes down here and looks like this. All these y values are getting stretched up. This is above this one here. All right? That's what's happening. Okay. If I would have been less than 1 right there, would my black line been above that red parabola or below that red parabola then? Below it, okay. All right. What do we get out? 908? Yeah, we've got time to do this last one, kids. This one here is kind of a tricky one, okay? First things first, kids. Hey, you know what? Let's wait on this one. I'm going to stop there, okay? Let's wait on this one, okay?